प्राइम एशिया टेलीविजन के सारे ही दर्शकों संजीव तवंदा सत श्रीकाल नमस्कार आदाब दोस्तों पिछले काफ़ी दिनों असी बहुत सारे पोलिटिकल लीडर्स बडिंग पोलिटिकल लीडर्स हु आर पार्टिसपेटिंग इन द इलेक्शनस इन सिटी ऑफ ब्रैमटन इलेक्शनस बी इट मेयर्स बी इट रिजनल काउंसलर्स बी इट स्कूल ट्रस्टीज और सिटी काउंसलर सो वी हैव टॉक टू सो मैनी पीपल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक टू विनोद महेशन हु इज कंटेस्टिंग द इलेक्शन फॉर द मेयर सो विनोद यस वेलकम टू प्राइम एशिया टेलीविजन थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी हियर इट्स एन ग्रेट टू बी हियर विनोद द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन आई वुड आस्क यू एज I have not seen you in any election so far. You are taking a big, big responsibility to contest the election for the city mayor, who is basically the leader of the uh, the city. So, how this idea to contest election came in your mind? Ah, uh, let me put it this way: it's it came out more from a desperate situation. I'm a resident of uh, Brampton now for four plus years. I live here with my family and my kids and. one of the things which we came here for was because it's a safer environment it's a better place over the four years a couple of things have been deteriorating safety has deteriorated anyway down very bad you are very well aware you've been reporting a lot about the crime which is occurring the second thing which was occurring on is education um and i felt and then i had to deal with the city for some work which i work with and then i kind of felt a helpless at many times that a the our taxes are up money is getting wasted Uh, we are not getting the right services we are having um problems from practically on a daily basis and no concrete futuristic solutions coming out we have what i call as bandaid approaches so that was not working for me and i'm like i waited till the second last day hoping some credible somebody credible somebody who knows the city somebody who loves the city somebody who's passionate about the city and truly wants to build the city will come up nobody came i filed in my nomination on the last day we got couple two more nominees i checked their you know i checked their background and see you know are they good enough can they do this work and unfortunately i found out that neither of them have done anything which has any result oriented um uh, solutions or result oriented work so then i said this is now i can't have this for another four years so that's where the desperation kicked in like i can't let my kids go through portables i can't i can't live in this kind of squalor So I said, no, I'm going to start. Uh, Vinod, before I ask you uh, further questions, mm-hmm. uh, what are what's your education? What are your credentials? What your experiences? What you have done so far uh, in your young life? Okay, so basically, I am uh, the CIO of Prosopos Inc. and the president of Lane Inn Incorporated. We actually run a small boutique consulting firm in management consulting and process improvement. Mm-hmm. We primarily deal with the uh, uh, digital empowerment. Uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, my clients are some some of the big names out there um, and my education is i'm an mba in finance and marketing and i'm also certified cost accountant and then technology happened to me for 20 years okay so i cannot ask you questions what are your accomplishments uh, in the city of brampton because you have never been to that this yes. is a, an important question i have asked uh, Uh, many candidates for mayor who were part of the city of mm-hmm. Hampton so i'll actually rephrase this question in a different way okay uh, what do you think are the major accomplishments of uh, madam linda jaffrey and what are her major failures uh, as a neutral objective rational educated person okay so from a neutral perspective i would suggest is that she did come up on a platform that you know i'm going to stop corruption um not sure how much of that actually occurred but we have not heard much cases after that so i'm assuming that is at least something which has worked out the second thing which she came out was that she said we'll clean the city we will make it transparent unfortunately that's not happened in the four years cuz i've been a victim of that i had sent out a note uh, to the city asking certain questions about a work they were doing um they didn't respond then i sent it through my counselor gopi dilan they didn't answer to my counselor either it took two months and after i started actually running for mayor and then i ended up meeting up one of the staff members is when the next day i got the response <laughs> okay <laughs> that's really funny that's no it's it's kind of ridiculous right that you know you have to run for mayor to get answers from the staff uh uh does it mean they think that so the uh, you may be probable winner 
I, I don't know. I have to push for it because my goal is not for me alone. I'm not here for personally for my sake. It was, it's never for me. It's more of an awareness factor because when I did the math and I looked at the research, I found out that we only have 36% people who voted. The rest, 64% didn't even vote. Yes. Right? So that means we have a minority uh, government. So what do you think is the reason behind people's lackluster interest uh, in uh, the city elections? A good, a good point of, a uh, good set of folks who have come to this country have come from situations where which are much, much far worse than what it is here. Like, you know, you didn't get power, you didn't get better roads, you had problems with water. So you had daily issues. So you used to actually go out and vote because you had something which is hitting you on a daily basis. Right now, a good chunk of the fo folks who live in Brampton, they have that experience and they're like, okay, compared to that, this is still better. I get my power 24 hours. <laughs> you know what? It's, I, I get water 24-7. Okay, maybe they take two, three days to clean the snow. That's fine. At least they're cleaning the snow <laughs> in three days. So... That has created an attitude. Mm -hmm. And then the awareness, lack of awareness in terms of how much your vote matters, what it makes uh, like a municipal elections impacts you on a day-to-day -day basis. All your daily stuff is managed by the municipality. So that awareness has not been created neither by the government nor by the media. So I'm, I'm equal, placing equally both culpable. Okay. And, so. uh, you know, I couldn't ask you and cannot ask you and will not ask you questions about your performance as I previously also said that uh, mm -hmm. you were never part of the uh, city administration in any role. Uh, but I will ask you, do you have any concrete initiatives, plans uh, on various issues? And the oh, first, yes. first issue is that we are all aware when the first Brampton Hospital was uh, created, so they were almost, uh, they were prepared for 180 uh, patients for the emergency room per day. But mm -hmm. we see that uh, more than double the patients, they go every day. Mm -hmm. So Brampton badly needs a, th a, need a third hospital, a full hospital. So how will you bring that? Okay, so let's address this by in two parts. Part one is, you have to look at what's actually causing the emergency rooms or the waiting areas to be filled up. There's a plethora of reasons. People go to the hospital for multiple reasons. So I go there, okay, I've got a very serious sickness, illness, that's why I'm trying to go there. But a good chunk of folks who go there are because there is no alternative emergency care which provides imaging and pathology services on the same day. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of those because I had my daughter, she had fever for a couple of days we gave her Tylenol Advil, and then we said, oh, we don't know if it's an infection, but how do we know on a yeah. Sunday morning? So when Sunday morning, we spent eight hours. We actually took food with us so that we know because we're going to spend eight hours there just so that the pathology and the uh, test can be done at the same uh, time. But don't you think that it's possible that you go to a walk-in clinic and they can actually arrange uh, in a day uh, the tests and everything? Well, not, uh, not happening on a Saturday or a Sunday. Okay. Right. So what we want is, as I said, let me get to the solutions. Short-term solution is, which developing countries have actually done, sometimes you have to learn from the developing countries, is putting many hospitals in four segments, mm -hmm. rather than putting one big hospital, which we want to. We need some big hospitals too, don't get me wrong, but that takes around 10 to 20 years to come through. Like we get swimming pools constructed in four years. So, yep. so let's, if a hospital, it's going to take time. But as a mini hospital, smaller beds, smaller sizes, giving these efficient services can be built in a year or two. So within the term of somebody running, like if I become mayor within a term of two years, I can push for and make that happen. Now, the big hospital, yes, I have to work with the province. I have to go after the province. I have to go after, the, go after them and explain to them this is the situation. And one of the things I would definitely want to do is a census count, a re-proper census count of Brampton. Because right now the census says 560,000 folks. In reality, Brampton has a much, much larger population because a lot of the second unit homes are not even factored in. So when you have a much larger population, you have got a very small set of infrastructure, it's going to be overloaded. I'm happy you're young, I'm happy you have new ideas, but my major concern will be that uh, uh, if you're to work with the province, mm -hmm. uh, you need a lot of political experience. If we look at the other candidates, John Strawberry, mm -hmm. Patrick Brown, mm -hmm. uh, Linda Jaffrey, so they all have a lot of political experience and cloud and connections. If people of Brampton elect you as a mayor, 
how will you get connected and get things done? Okay, so one of the best things about me is I don't have any political baggage. I am not aligned to any particular party, so which helps me actually open up much faster. In fact, I've already made requisitions to meet up with every minister uh, in, the, in the province. I've already met all of the, most of our MPPs. Mm -hmm. I've already meeting up the MPs already. So I've already started that work of building that network. Right now I can actually say I've got my, my MPPs at least on my phone. So, and they are happy to support me with the cause because see, they also understand that this is for Brampton. I'm not coming here with a political agenda. I'm not coming here to further my political career. And because that's when people have a problem that, oh, you, you, this guy is going to claim fame, name fame. I don't need that. I already got that. All I'm here is for Brampton, and they understand that. Everybody I've spoken to, they understand, and they said, you know, we are happy to support you because your ideas make sense. You have nothing which we have to worry about. Whereas if you compare to my competition, uh, all of the politicians, they have got different kinds of problems. So Linda is a liberal, although the conservatives are supporting her. That's fine. But... We all know that's going to create somewhere other schism or problem at some point of time. Uh, Vinod, thank you very much. Uh, I have to cut you short. We have to no go worries. for a commercial break and we'll be back. And uh, I have still many questions sure. uh, to ask you. So, hun asi janeya ek break the aur break the baad wapas. दोस्तों ब्रेक पे जान तो पहला ऐसी विनोद जी देनाल गलबात कर रहे सी और उन आदि क्वेश्चंस ऐसी उन्होंने काफी पूछे कि तुष्य किमें करोगे की तो आदि प्लान्स नहीं तुष्य प्रोविंस नाल किमें कनेक्ट होगे तुष्य हॉस्पिटल किमें लेके आओगे सो अगेन कमिंग बैक टू विनोद सो विनोद यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट that Ford is an open season. Right now, everybody knows that he can't work with the province. The province is trying its their level best not for him to even win this election. So that's something, it's a well-known fact. So now if somebody comes and says, no, 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 that's not going to happen, I can work with them, bollocks to that, not happening. Then we have got other two candidates, Baljit Gosavji and John Strawberry. Both are conservatives. Why is the conservative party not supporting both of them and fundraising for a liberal? It's just a valid question. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from a completely independent person. I'm, I'm just looking at it from that. Uh, 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 what do you think? Uh, what's the reason behind uh, that, that uh, Doug Ford? Uh, I can understand he doesn't support uh, the Patrick Brown. But what about uh, John Sprovery and Bal Gosal? What do you think are the political uh, uh, reasons behind uh, this? OK, I'm, I'm going to give my analysis, right? Yeah. It might be the right thing or whichever way. So I did a bit of analysis on both John and Baljit Ji. John's a great guy. He is going to be my regional, he is my regional counselor when I was in one of my areas. Amazing guy, nice guy, very gentle guy. But then I don't, probably the conservatives believe that he, he doesn't have an opportunity or a chance to win. Okay. Maybe that's the reason because, you know, whatever occurred. But his residents like him. I know that for a fact. Even I too like, like him. Coming to Baljit Gusalji, uh, I wouldn't put it very lightly, but what I'm saying is this, that when you have been at a federal level, a minister, the expectation is that you would, like half, half the city, half, half of Canada should know you. Right. So if that has not happened, and then the true results, we need to get results out of your folks who are coming. Like if I come in, I stand in, I do for four years, I need to show results. Right. That's what we are asking going after Linda, because that performance has not happened. The results are not there. Okay. So those results are missing. So that's probably the reason why the Conservative Party decided not to support him. So, you know, my next question is mm -hmm. that uh, murders, shootings, stabbings, mm -hmm. drugs, and mm -hmm. normal one are coming to uh, Brampton. And people, they are really frightened. Mm -hmm. um, how, what plan you have mm -hmm. to make Brampton a safe city? So I've got a short-term plan and a long-term plan. So short-term plan is we're going to increase uh, cameras across in all public places. Mm -hmm. I'm going to connect that camera into a security network. I call it as a safety network, actually. Connect it into the safety network, which is easily accessible as an information portal. That's part one. Part two, we're going to efficiently use our uh, law enforcement resources to ensure that uh, they get additional funding for better technologies. Uh, we'll also ensure that we'll streamline their processes 
and reduce their paperwork. Finally, we'll also improve the community involvement and engagement of law enforcement with the community. Okay. And finally, we as a community also have to do things. We have to take care of, we will provide immediate support for mental health, whether addiction, um, depression, all the other issues. Um, but we also have to uh, look into what else we can do with the community. So there is a good uh, initiative which I want to start. Um, is Digital Neighborhood Watch. So it's just a digitized version of Neighborhood Watch as you hear, but it's connected across the city and then integrated with the city safety network. So that kind of brings out a huge amount of deterrence factors. And uh, last but not the least, um, we have to address the root cause of crime. There's a lot of uh, poverty and hunger in this country. In, in, in fact, it's very sad that you know a country like Canada, where we give free education and free healthcare, we don't provide free shelter and free food. When people have to go to food banks to grab food, that means we are doing a very bad job. So that is something which poverty elevation programs is something which we want to bring. Uh, there's another important question, and everyone is talking about that the previous council was dysfunctional. Uh -huh. So Madam Linda Jaffrey, uh, uh, blame it on uh, Mr. Sprovery and uh, other people. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Sprovery and other people, they blame that Madam was uh, disrespectful. Uh -huh. As an independent observer, uh -huh. what do you think was the main reason behind this dysfunctional council? Uh, it's called as you have to come across with common grounds with people, right? So you cannot just simply, you might differ in opinion, I might differ in opinion, but you've been elected to serve the people, I've been elected to serve the people. So we have to come up across on what is the common ground, align with that. And then if you, if I believe that you're doing something really wrong for the city, then I need to bring it out to the city as a referendum. Let's go out and have an open referendum with the people because finally the people's money and the people say which we're trying to spend. So that kind of collaborative approach and working together with people, even if we have differences, is what is missing. Like I, I, I try to do, even all of these folks are my competitors, yeah. but at the same time, I try to still build a relationship with them so that competition is one thing. We all are trying to do the good, something good for the city. Um, in some of the debates, say Brampton uh, Board of Trade mm -hmm. and others, we saw that uh, Madam Linda Jaffrey, she uh, talked about the accusations about uh, Patrick Brown. She talked about uh, John Saprori uh, being an embarrassment for her. And similarly, Patrick Brown uh, put a lot of blames on uh, Madam Jaffrey. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think in those debates, was it fair and warranted to talk about the personal uh, allegations which are not uh, proven uh, in any court? What's so, your idea? I, I was not invited to the debate. Uh, they said that I do not fit so there. I'm uh, giving you an opportunity to yeah, yeah. Uh, reflect on that. I, I, I was actually defined that I do not fit the criteria, whatever arbitrary standards they set up than the Brampton Board of Trade, which is surprising that they don't want to invite me, a successful entrepreneur, to the Brampton Board of Trade debate. So that was side, on the side. When I watched the debate, I, I listened to everybody. One of the things I've said time and again is, you need to be discussing and disagreeing and creating issues on ideas. The time when you start getting down to people's character, that means you have a problem that, you know, either your ideas are not good enough that you can't present it. So I had made a very conscious decision, I'm not gonna go after anybody personally. I'm gonna go after their ideas. If their ideas don't meet what the standards are required for Brampton, I'm gonna go after that. I'm gonna say that idea is not good, it won't support it. So people going after each other, these are standard politicians, so. I'm not going out of that <laughs> cloth, I'm, I'm different, right? And I'm not going to do that. Okay, so another important thing is that uh, everyone is talking that city, Brampton, uh -huh. is a sleeping city, so we don't have any jobs. And you are, uh, I believe, in uh, IT yes. and uh, all this stuff. And I know that lots and lots of people who live in Brampton goes every day using Go Train or right. other stuff okay. uh, to go uh, do jobs in downtown Toronto. Uh -huh. So. Do you have any idea that you can bring those people here, you can bring those jobs here? Okay, so first of all, I have a very big problem with this term sleeping city. We are actually a commuter city. The only time I agree that Brampton is a sleeping city is when we look at that, you know, Brampton actually has an amazing, highly educated workforce, mm -hmm. um, a very young, growing population of families, and, and uh, what I call it as the best multi diversity I've seen. So, and, and, and you add to that the actual entrepreneurship streak which we all have, that's an asset. It's a sleeping city in that terms. we just need to wake it up, that guys, you need to wake up and do things, right? 
So the 60% who go out to work, they go out in the technology sector, the financial sector, the administration sector. Yeah. Right. Now, to bring that jobs here, it's easy because the talent is already here. Now, why don't somebody want to bring in an office here is because we don't have the right infrastructure. Any field, like even technology field, uh, I did a study of Austin, I did a study of you know uh, San Francisco, I did a study of where they are growing up yeah. from, right? So I wanted to see how these digitized futuristic cities are because what they did is the city focused on building the infrastructure. They built out high-end uh, networks in terms of like uh, our, our Wi-Fi networks, yeah. our digital networks. Uh, they built making offices very easy. They built out yeah. other amenities. So those things, once we build out, Bringing the jobs back is easy because the employees would be more than happy to come here because these employees will be willing to work for less money because it's closer to home. So if I am an employer, I'd be happy to put office in Brampton when I say I get the same workforce for cheaper. So my last question, a sure. quick question is that Brampton lost millions of dollars on LRT, okay? And uh, we lost connectivity. Uh, Madam Mayor uh -huh. blame the other councillors, uh -huh. other councillors blame Madam Mayor. What is your take on who do you think is responsible? I think actually we don't need an LRT in the form they were actually subscribing for, which is putting a train track in the middle of a street. Think of this way. If you look at Brampton's commute, a lot of it is cars, but a lot of it is trucks. Putting an LRT will not eliminate those trucks. One. Second is, this is where we need to learn again from the developing cities. You need to build a province-wide, because nobody knows when Brampton ends, and Misaka starts or Etobicoke starts, nine out of 10 people won't be able to answer that question for you. So what we need is we have formed on a grid-based network. Let's build an elevated grid-based network. 25 kilometers is Brampton east-west, 15 kilometers north-south. Build a grid-based network, which the province can then connect into, or the province can build the network. What we as a city need to provide is the last mile connectivity from my home <coughs> to the transit hub. Today, people are having problems that they don't want to go to the GO station because by 7.30, the GO station uh, is filled up. The parking lot is filled up. I'm not going to walk all the way to the GO station because my city is not built in that model. So uh, that's th my you, solution. Thank you, Vinod. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Those who see Jan Dia, a Sikise V candidate, the Nathan Sport Kardia, Prime Asia Television, Nahikis candidate to oppose Karda. Sada objective AK Sari candidates to equal opportunity deke, Unanu Maka Denaki, Uapne, which are to Hardinal, Sher Karsakan, Sanjay Karsakan. So as the program, Ethi Khatam Karandi, Izazdio, Prime Asia Television, Nu Victoro, this is Eto Hada TV or to Hadali. हर रोज अपने फेवरेट शो देखने ही होगी पाजनाट क्योंकि ब्रिटिश या ते प्राइम एशिया ने मिला लेने हाथ हर रोज देखो प्राइम एशिया टीवी दे हिट शोज और ब्रिटिश या टीवी ते देश दुनिया दिया खबर ले प्राइम न्यूज़ स्वीरे सातवाजे प्राइम वुमन बेस्ड ऑन वुमेन्स इश्यूज़ स्वीरे साढे सातवाजे कल्चरल शो विद म्य प्राइम जिंदगी स्वेरे आठ बजे रिलिजियस इश्यूज ले प्राइम चर्चा ते एंटरटेनमेंट ले प्राइम टाइम स्वेरे नौ बजे बेस्ड ऑन डेली करंट पॉलिटिकल इश्यूज प्राइम फोकस शाम पांच बजे जज द विचार म्यूजिकल कॉमेडी शो एंड इंटरव्यूज विद पंजाबी स्टार्स शाम छह बजे बेतड़क ते पाक पात रहत सीनियर पत्रकार जितेंद्र पनुजी दा शो प्राइम डिस्कशन देखो शाम 7 बजे ते की रहा अखबारां दियां सुर्खियां च दसणगे स्वर्ण टैणा खबर दी खबर शाम 7:30 बजे सो पंजाब दे करीब देशां च वास्ते पंजाबियां दे टीवी सेट्स दे स्काई टीवी चैनल 743 वर्जिन टीवी चैनल 840 फ्री व्यू चैनल नंबर 264 ते ब्रिटिश या टीवी है जिथे प्राइम एशिया टीवी है उथे